Hey everybody, it's Jenny from Norman Wright. Since the air has come through the filter now, let's look at the next part of the system. Most likely the air is going to see hot water or cold water coils next. Now the coils don't have to be water. They could be DX coils, have refrigerant in them. But for simplicity, let's just talk about water coils today. So let's go over water coil basics. A water coil is a basic heat exchanger, meaning that it transfers or exchanges heat between two fluids, in this case, air and water. A water coil is made up of copper tubes passing through aluminum or copper fins. The tubes can be different diameters, like 3 eighths of an inch, half an inch, 5 eighths of an inch, and so on, and different wall thicknesses, like 0.014 inches, 0.016 inches, 0.02 inches, etc. The fins can be different styles, like flat, corrugated, or sine waves, and have different thicknesses like 0.0045 inches, 0 0.0055, 0 0.006 inches, and so on. And you can have different fins per inch, like 10 fins per inch or 12 fins per inch. The variation in the thickness, diameter, and fins per inch affect the performance and the cost of the coil. All of this is housed in sheet metal frame that holds it all together and allows you to mount it in products like thermal units, fan coils, air handlers, or in the duct itself. Let's draw some fins and look at this. The copper tubes are bent into hairpins and inserted through the fins. Each hairpin is connected to the next hairpin by a return bend that is welded on to make a continuous flow of water through the coil. The headers, also known as manifolds, are where your supply water and return water piping is connected to the water coil. Physically, you can only fit so many tubes through the given size coil. So if the available space for the coil allows you to have a 10 inch fin height, this determines how many tubes you can have in the coil. The length obviously determines how long the tubes are, and the depth determines how many rows you have, or vice versa, how many rows you have will determine the depth. So let's draw the end of a water coil and put some tubes in it like this. So let's number the rows. You can see this is a four row coil. Let me make a little room. For the height, you can see that it's six tubes high. Now let's connect all the tubes. So this light blue color are connections on the other side of the coil and the green will be connections on this side that we're looking at. So let's say they're connected like this. So water would enter here and water would exit here. And let's do all of them. So now you can see that there would be three connections to the header, and that would make this a three-circuit water coil. So the headers would connect the three circuits like this, and then water would enter the header on the left side of this image, go through the tubes, and exit on the right side. So the water flow in this case is from left to right through this coil. If the air flow through this coil is also from left to right, this is a parallel flow coil. If the airflow in this coil is from right to left, then that would be a counterflow coil. So let's say this is a hot water coil. If the airflow is going left to right and it's a parallel flow coil, the air would see the hottest water first. If this was used as a counterflow coil, the air would see the coldest water first. Let's just make a little more room. So hot or cold water passes through the tubes of the coil while air is passed through the fins. The water in the tubes heats up the fins, in the case of a hot water coil, and transfers its heat to the cold air passing through it. Or if it's a cold water coil, the hot air transfers heat to the fins, which warms up the water in the tubes, and the heat is taken away as it flows through the water coil. So that's a quick overview on water coils. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thanks for watching.